Simon. Um, Carlos Foster here. Um, and this video is for Remy Step. I used to be a member there. Um, and I just kind of want to talk to the kids that's there. I don't really know them, but I used to be one. And um, I'm an extraordinary one. I think back about a lot of things that led me up to be there. And I never really had too many charges or things like that, you know, from Ohio. I found my dad. My dad so happened to live in Kentucky when I was 13, 14. You know, he's a drug dealer at the time that stays with a female who kind of, you know, it's her house. She throws him out, throws me out. You know, he goes to jail. I stay with her. A lot of different things happened to where, you know, I ended up in foster care and different group homes and I never really felt like I did anything wrong. You know, and I was the one kind of being punished. So I know it's a lot of kids that's kind of lost in the system and it, 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 is, it might not be your fault. So a lot of times people, you know, they call it having a pity party or you getting down on yourself. It's not necessarily that, you know what I mean? It's just people make bad decisions. You know, grown-ups make bad decisions. All grown-ups ain't right. Pretty sure you've seen grown people that are wrong. Um... I myself, you know, have made many bad decisions, you know, not perfect. But at the same time, I do want to let kids know that, you know, at my age, 33 now, I was there when I was, you know, like from 16 to 18. Even after I was 18, I got hired back. You know, I went to college. I got a scholarship to college. I hired back and I came back to work with the kids a couple summers afterward. But now I really want to, you know, come up here and talk to some of the people to be a good influence. Um, I got a bunch of old pictures and I got the, my camera hooked up to my TV so I can kind of, you know what I'm saying, show them, which is looking kind of lame. Try to put them in order, but I'm um, pretty much, you know, this is one. We used to have a lot of, you know, family barbecues and different things. I used to like how, you know, they would just integrate different families. Everybody, you know, even my family would come down from Ohio and different people. A lot of kids, you know, they had us fresh. You know, we wearing a little Rainy East Step shirts or the uniforms. They was always clean. You know what I mean? They instilled pride. All these cottages, they got us cleaning them. You know, we go out, we work hard, we play hard, and it's clean. Some of the staff members, that's, uh, I think that was the third cottage. Um, this is another one of them picnics, family days. You know, a lot of families was there. For Christmas, um, this is way, way back. I don't even remember, but... Those are the old shirts. I'm sure y'all don't wear them now, but for Christmas, you know, a lot of people was getting a lot of gifts. It might not have been, you know, the best gifts in the world, but they, you know, make sure everybody eats well. Um, you know, they sleep well, they get gifts. Y'all you know, try to celebrate holidays. I know we went to, you know, Kentucky Kingdom and, you know, Kings Island and a lot of different places. Reds games, Cincinnati Bengals games. Um, this is some pictures from my graduation at the, um, in the school, in the gym, they had just built the gym. I've seen them build the school, so if it's still there, which I'm sure it is. You know, no, I was from the first class of that. This is me with my mom back in the day there. My little my little suit at the time. We got brothers and sisters. This is at the exact same time I'm graduating. They kids, so they like babies to me. I didn't see them born. So they like an influence upon me, something that motivates me to, for me to go to college, which I ended up going to three different ones, you know, the first one I kind of blew my scholarship and different things. This is my other baby sister. She's a baby baby at this time. She's the baby sister of these last two kids. So I got three of them plus my other five younger brothers and sisters, which we'll get into that later. Um, a lot of the people, my aunt and uncle, they moved to Africa, but they came down here to visit me, whatever the name of it, that little town, Ashland Mall or something. I don't know what it's called. But, um, you know, they always believed that I would go to college and different things. And the Rainy East at home kind of made that a reality. You know what I mean? My parents, my mom worked hard. You know, she really didn't have no college fund type money. My dad really wasn't on it with his little drug money or whatever. And, 
you know, even though I was smart enough to go, I didn't have the resources. I didn't have the opportunity. You know, I had a social worker. We got CCW, um, child care workers, a facility there. There's people just trying to, just really trying to bring out the best to me and, and make me positive. And I kind of was immature and didn't really see it. Once I started seeing and started working with them, everything that they were saying would happen for me was happening. So I got pictures of that. But this is back at the um, old Remy home. We used to cook. You know, this is like, I don't know what that is, making muffins or something. They used to show us home at, this is my softball team's kind of first meet. You know what I mean? Um, back in the day, I wrote everybody's name on the pictures from back in the day because I know I'm probably not going to remember them, but uh, their names are on there. Um, it's like, I guess they got what they call the Frank Lee Award. So the best basketball player wins the Frank Lee Award. Each year, I don't know if that still happens, but if it does, then know that I won the award when I was there. This is me at the thing. If you can see me in the gym, all those other chairs are empty because they've already given everybody else their awards. Um, this is my social worker, which I kind of didn't like her at the time, but as I look back, I think she's an angel. She had my best interests in mind most of the time, and you know, sending me there was a good decision, even though. I didn't think so at the time. Um, these are a few other staff members, Mr. Harrison, Mr. Scott. This is outside um, of the colleges, cottages, different things. This is me doing a jump ball. This guy, Mario Johnson, a couple people in the stands uh, took pictures of me. I used to hoop, dunk, was on the traveling team, baseball team, and the basketball team. Um, phone ringing this is a dance they had with another girls facility I want to say it was by Marshall or Moorhead I don't know but it's a girls facility too before y'all had girls at that facility there's only one other facility so they had a Christmas party and uh this is us leading some sort of electric slide Congo line sort of thing which is great this is another jump ball game um you know, people just taking pictures. This is me with the bomb in the gym. Loving it. Um, this is us playing in the gym, scoreboard, taking it out. This is in the hallway of the school. A couple people that were graduates before me. This is when I was in the choir on my graduation day. Everybody had choir robes and stuff. I had on my graduation robe, which was blue. But I enjoyed singing, and it was kind of cool and fun. Even though I was singing with a bunch of guys, it, it was it was better than working and being on timeout, no stick, and just going through a lot of the drama, you know. Um, just once I finally got to college, I tried to grow my hair out and get a little braids. I had a bunch of clothes. Some of my friends from there, we got to rapping and having fun. People from Cali, from Birmingham, from... Uh, Tennessee and Knoxville. This is when I got to be on the radio station in Lexington, make music. Um, it's called The Beat. I want to say it's, I don't know, whatever it is. But, you know, a couple of my friends, I was a musician and a rapper before I got to the Remy East Step Homes. And we had dropped some CDs. They were in the store down in Somerset. But I had called out a couple. Um, I'm going to call them rednecks. We'll just say prejudiced people who were picking on me at the time. And since I'm from Ohio, I don't really take too kindly to the racism. And so we made a song and call the people out. We get sued. It's just crazy. And that's kind of a part of what leads me to the Raimi East Step Homes. We're making music and it kind of got physical. Uh, this is from the college. Once I got to college, me and my friends would... Walk to mountaintops and write poetry, and I would, you know, just air out and really just think back and reflect upon life. I've pretty much won every single poetry show I've ever been in since the fourth grade, even when I was there. Um, I wrote some of the best poetry I ever could write only because um, that we weren't allowed to use slang, and, you know, my mind was clear from, you know, different things, drugs and alcohol. It was kind of a stress-free environment, like, once you get so much up in the phases and you, you really get to start using the resources, the school and the teachers and, the, you know, just the whole facility to your advantage, 
then you will see it's a lot better. And I'm pretty sure on the campus now you can see it's like certain peers who seem like they're having a good time there and certain people who are like having a horrible time. And then there's other people who just kind of in between, you know, they're trying to get to this next phase, but they it's a lot of drama kind of pulling them back. And there's people that don't want to, they don't want to see you get to the next level. And in real life, that's what it is, you know what I mean? People, they want to see you doing good, but they don't want to see you doing better than them. So that causes a lot of hate, a lot of hating. Understand that haters come in all shapes and sizes, you know. Um, these are uh, different pictures, you know, where I take tours. I've been to Vegas. Um, I used to live in L.A. I used to live in Chicago. I used to stay in Atlanta. My mom stays in Miami now. Um, I helped her move down there, visit her often. I'm about to take um, another tour back to Cali and Vegas. We're going to Milwaukee. I've been to Detroit a few times. Cleveland. Houston. I mean, just just a lot of different places. You know, a lot of people love. They love my music, but my music is from, you know, it's real. I'm not going to glorify the drug dealing and the killing and the, you know, the sex and a lot of different things. I mean, I can say that and I'm grown, you know, I might have smoked or drank or even partaken in sex and different things, but to glorify it and say that's what's right is not what's up. That's not real music, you know. Once you get mature and you have your own kids, and that's what the main thing of this is, is to think one day you can do one of these videos for the kids. Hopefully you will be an inspiration. You can come back and say, yo, I beat the odds. I'm not a statistic. I didn't go to prison. Hopefully this place helps you intervene and takes a, a, a better path in life. It's always a good path and a, and a bad path. You're going to have to take the bad path. Even if it's two bad paths, one got to be less bad than the other one. <laughs> you know? So, you know, these are more pictures from the plane. Different stuff. Uh, we sell CDs. I got this burner on here. Just to show y'all, you know, we burn major CDs, like my whole living room's full of CDs. End up graduating from college. This is my degree. This is not a, a diploma. This is one of my old graduation, you know, pictures. 98, when I was there with them, repping some of my old keyboards and stuff. I gave them to my little cousin for Christmas. This is when I lived in Shot Town. These are old pictures, some old studios. This is Atlanta. Martin Luther King's grave site. Um, this is downtown Chicago. Sears Tower from the Navy Pier. Um, these are some uh, other people who graduated from college with me from Chicago and different places. This is an African. I took a picture with he so happened to have the highest GPA of my graduating class. Thought he was a complete idiot the whole school year. Turns out he's smarter than me. Um, these guys are some of the guys you learn from. Um, old white men and old Arabic men. Which, when I look around the neighborhood, they're the ones who own all the gas stations and corner stores. And they get into that money. So to learn how they think and function and, and relate to each other is, is very important. You know what I mean? This is a, some more of it. Something that, you know, out of all the dysfunctionality within my family, you know what I mean, to come back to Ohio and go to college, you know, I went to three different ones, to go to college and graduate, you know, I finally brought my mom and my dad's side of the family together, and they finally was, you know, happy and didn't, there wasn't no arguments or nothing, and came together, and, you know, all my brothers and sisters and my little cousins, and some people know my struggle, some people don't. You know, and I believe I could do it. Anybody can do it. You know, we all we all start at a different place in this race, but you but you can finish it. Everybody wants to get to the top. Everybody wants to be successful. Who wants to be a loser? Who wants to be broke? You know, when I was in first meet. I could say one of the most important things that that they ever taught us, and it was a made up rule. Made up rule. Not in the handbook. None of that BB best stuff. None of that rummy. None of that. Miss Ramey was born with the hack E step long, long ago, once upon a time and all of that. The number one rule that I took with me is we we were not allowed to say can't. We was not allowed to just say we can't do something. 
and that's just I believe in that. Only thing I, I I can't do is lose. I can't die. We got time for that, you know what I mean? So I can't die. I can't lose. Still read a lot of books. Just you know, I suggest you read books. If you're an artist, read Vincent Van Gogh and Da Vinci and and, and Michelangelo and different people. I make music and I want to you know run my music. So I read about different people. Russell Simmons, you know, this is not any college book. They're not gonna tell me to read this. I'm gonna read it myself and go buy it. The story. Eminem, you know, he writes a book. He's a rapper. Master P used to run the hip hop industry for a while. Common, one of the most positive artists out, stars in movies from Chicago. Um, just major. And as far as the label, you know, I got just so many demos and free CDs people just give me like every day. Like, I swear I got like a hundred of these. I feel like Russell Simmons. Like this one doesn't even have a cover, which doesn't mean anything. It might be banging. I done got some with the dopest cover ever that was horrible, you know. So, I have to listen to all of them. I don't usually listen to them when I ride back and forth to Kentucky or Indiana. Different places. Um, this some more. I don't even know these people, but I just want to tell everybody down there I really love them. You know, and if you're going through a lot right now, just know that I, I haven't forgot about you. I, it might not be a lot of videos out there with people saying that they love you or they care about y'all or they whatever. I'm gonna try to, you know, come down there and, and give people everybody a free CD and take pictures or, you know, inspire people, motivate people, change their way of thinking, let them know that. You know, this is a part of their success rate. They used to talk really highly about me back then. Even though now I look different. You know, I got the dreads and you know, I'm sitting here. This isn't an official Randy Step shirt or whatever they thought I was supposed to be wearing. But at the same time, you know, you can look me up on Facebook. Like I said, this is a real degree. You know, I got a son. He's 12. He'll be 13 this year. I get him every summer, spring break, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. And, you know, he lives 150, 175 miles away, one way. You know, so you can do anything. You can be anybody. Just stay positive. Stay away from drugs and alcohol, you know what I mean? I ain't going to tell you, you know. I'm going to tell you just stay away from that stuff. But it, that, that stuff is there. If you're from the hood, you're from that environment, you know, I know people who got parents that are drunks or alcoholics or addicts or whatever. You know, sometimes it's hard to stay away from that stuff. But at the same time, if you see that, them doing those habits or behaviors has led you to be where you at. They chose that over you. Then that's not the path you want to do for your kids. So the best thing that you could really be thinking about right now is bettering your future so you could be a better parent. So your children or grandchildren, niece and nephew, don't have to be where you at right now. I don't even want you to be there. I don't even know you. But it's all good. Check it out. Shout out to Mr. Krantz. Um, sorry it took me so long to do this. I'm kind of like a perfectionist. and I mean, I can talk all day through this camera, as you can see. But I don't want to. I don't even know how long this is. But like I said, I do love everybody. Pray. I hope that y'all save a lot of families. People work things out. Get things functioning. Better people's lives. Y'all better man. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I will be there soon. You go to my website if you want to see some more videos. Um, Lociano verses, I rap battle people, Lociano poetry, we do poetry, Lociano um, dope beats production, I make my own beats, I shoot regular videos, I interview people, um, car shows, um, hip hop summits, I'm about to do a game show, just do a lot, you know, worldwide for my community, give back, peace.